I knew this was a small saw, but it doesn't even feel like a chainsaw. It feels like a toy, it's so light. Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms, and I have a problem. My problem is an addiction to power equipment, and today that's manifesting itself with steel chainsaws. So I already had three different chainsaws in three different you know, power ranges, but I got the itch for a bigger option and put in an order, and while I was there, I got tempted by a smaller option. The last time we were cutting up a tree just down the hill here, um, I only had one saw that was even manageable for a limbing saw, and there were two of us trying to work. And the saw I used for limbing is a 250. That's still a pretty good sized saw. I thought, you know, it would be nice to have a really small chainsaw. I even considered getting an electric, but I just prefer gas powered tools. I know the electric have come a long way, but I was thinking I'll just pick up a 170. That's a lot lighter saw than a 250. It gives us the option to have two people running chainsaws at the same time. And, you know, for limbing or like trimming trees and stuff, the 250 is still a little bit big. So I was going to get a 170. And then I saw this little guy and fell in love. Said, I, I've got to have it. This is the Steel MS-194T. Now the 170 that I was thinking about getting weighs like 8.2 pounds. This weighs like 7.6 pounds. Feels pretty similar, honestly. Like that half pound doesn't seem like it should be enough to really make a difference because this saw costs a lot more. But the thing about the 170 is it's a traditional shaped saw. So you got a handle back here and all your weight is out here. So you can't handle it the way you can this little guy. This is a top handle saw. So the weight is balanced. It's, it's easy and comfortable to hold with one hand. And if you're on a ladder or you're on a lift or up in a tree and you need to trim a, a branch, you can. And then if you're walking down a tree limbing, you can still use two hands to not wear out your other shoulder. So I thought that's perfect. And if you're not familiar with top handle saws, what they're really designed for is climbers. They take this hook back here and they, they clip the saw onto their belt and actually can climb the tree and have their hands free from holding the saw. But I don't plan on doing any climbing anytime soon, but I still thought it would be nice to have a one-handed saw. So the benefits are clear. It's lighter weight easier to handle. The downside is it's a small saw. It doesn't have a lot of power and it's going to cut really slow. This is a 30 cc saw. I believe that my 250, the smallest saw I currently have is 44 cc's and the 170, I can't remember. I was thinking it was like 39 or 37. I was completely wrong on the engine size on the 170. It is a 30 cc saw exactly like the 194 is. So when I buy a small engine saw, I'm not gonna do a time test to see how fast it cuts like I do on all the bigger saws. I'm just gonna see if it feels sufficient when I'm trimming these small branches. So most of everything looks pretty familiar on this. The trigger's a little different and the choke is a little different. So I'm gonna check those out. I'm gonna look at the owner's manual, see if there's anything I need to know. I'm gonna Go ahead and put fuel and bar and chain oil in it. Then I'll give you an update if there's anything really interesting in the owner's manual. Then we'll go cut some stuff up. This is the bar oil. Do you want to pour it? Okay. Or you want to hold the camera while I do it? I hold the camera. Okay, point it at it. Oop. Too much. Oh! Spill it! Papa spilled it. Yeah. All right. Well, we spilled a little bit. I think you're supposed to, right? After reading the owner's manual, I do see something that's unique or different. 
So down here, you got your primer bulb like normal. Here, instead of having three positions, you have a choke and non-choke. All my other saws automatically turn the choke off when you um, pull the trigger. This one does not do that. So that is one difference. Now we're going to put it in the choke position because it's never been ran. But the other thing that's different is this top button right here. So you have a, a saw stop by pushing that forward. Then you have a run position. And then there's like a throttle lock position that you can squeeze these and pull that back. And now it's in a throttle lock position. It seems like you wouldn't ever want to lock the throttle on on a chainsaw. But this is used for starting the saw. I don't know why it's set up that way, but it is something to be aware of. So it says to push the primer bulb 10 times. Seems a little excessive. I usually do like three, but maybe I've just never read that part of the manual. Okay, now we're choked. We're in the throttle lock position. We have the bar lock on. Or the brake on. Let's start it up. Okay, now it tried to fire, so we'll turn the, the choke off. I'm gonna let this sit and run and break in and warm up. It's really weird to me that that doesn't have a half choke setting. I've got a ton of steel products from weed eaters and edgers and blowers. I've got the backpack and the handheld blower, four chainsaws. That's the only thing that I have that doesn't have a half choke. But I guess maybe that's what that does with the throttle lock. I've not seen that either. I'm going to let that run a few minutes, then we'll start cutting. I knew this was a small saw, but it doesn't even feel like a chainsaw. It feels like a toy, it's so light. Obviously, you have to observe your normal safety precautions because it's just as dangerous as any other saw. I'm just remarking on how light it is. So, what are my thoughts on the Steel MS-194T? It's snappy, I mean, responsive, cuts quick, I don't have any issues at all. It's one use, you know? It's not like I've put a lot of hours on it to review it that way, but lightweight, handy, good for doing what I just did. 
or if you're up in a lift or something, it'd be a good saw to take with you. Or like on a four-wheeler back into the back part of the property, good saw for that. So I think I'll trim one more over here and that'll be enough for this. I'll just have to clean up the limbs. I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'm gonna put a couple more videos in the corners and I'll see you next time.